Any more fares, please? Thank you. I want to go to Spa Road, Bermondsey, please. You'll have to change it, the elephant and car, so on to a number one, sir. Be a certainly fair. Thank you. Spar Road, Bermondry. I've never been here before. With a bit of luck, this is where I'm going to live and work. They give me the number of the place, 122. Spar Road and the people of Spar Road. My neighbours. A new block of flats. Very nice too. But that isn't number 122. No, 122 must be on this side of the road. That's right, this must be it. This is 122 Spa Road. Major, Mr. Keeble to see you, please. Oh, come in, Mr. Keeble. Just take a seat, will you, please? Sure. Okay. Um, now, I gather, Mr. Keeble, you've come here for employment? Yes, sir. I see. I'll have to ask you one or two personal questions about yourself first. First of all, can you tell me what your age is? Forty-two, sir. Uh, I see. Uh, of course, you know something about what we do here. If you want a job here, uh, you, you realise that you will have to come and live in the place with the other men? Yes, sir, I realise that. Uh, what kind of job uh, were you seeking? I'll do anything, sir. Well, of course, you know what it means when you say you'll do anything, don't you? Yes, I said anything and I'll stick to it. Uh, have you any relatives? Yes, my sister lives here, but I'm not married myself. Well, what have you been doing with yourself? Uh, what have you been doing in the past? Well, I did 12 years in the, in the army. Uh, I served in Burma with Wingate. And uh, since then I've been knocking about all over the place, working here and there and not working at all. Uh, do you belong to any religious organisation, any church? Uh, no, not really. I, sort of up and down, you know. But now, of course, I'm a Salvationist. Uh, well, uh, uh, tell me about that. How did that happen? Um, I was in Grimsby and uh, I wasn't drunk, but I was merry. and. Um, the corps sergeant uh, came to me and he said, uh, will you come to the meeting, Charlie? And of course, for something to do, I said, yes, all right. So I went along. And um, during the course of the service, a young lady got up and she shouted, praise the Lord. And I sort of looked and said, huh, fanatic. And of course, she was a fanatic as far as I was concerned. Um, but then I looked at her and there was a look in her eyes I looked as if she knew what she was talking about. Well, there must be something in it. And I thought to myself, well, now I must find out what this is. And I'm convinced that, um, well, the, the whole attitude is that you must give your life to one thing. And of course, that's God. There's nothing else in it. There's nothing else but that. That is what I believe. All right then, Mr. Cable, we'll find you a job. Uh, and I think you're going to be pretty lucky too, because we can find you a room as well. Uh, you'll need to fit it, up, fit it up yourself, and until you do that, uh, we'll put you in the dormitory with the other men. Thank you, sir. I'll get hold of the captain, and the captain can show you over to the dormitory. 
When you get to the top of the stairs, you turn right. Here you are. This is it. So this was my room. This was where I was going to live. The walls were dirty, the floor was dirty. But I reckoned if I could scrounge a bit of furniture and clean it up a bit, it won't look too bad. All right, if you come with me now, we'll go and see the dormitory. Thank you. Hello, Captain. Uh, this is your new roommate, Charlie Keeble. And this Hi, is Charlie. Peter. Hi. And uh, this is your bed, Charlie. And there's your locker. I think you'll be very happy with us. Right. And if there's anything you want, well, uh, just ask me. Right, thank you, Captain. No, I'll leave you with Peter now, and he'll look after you. Right, thank you. Right. How long have you been here, Pete? I've been here about six months. Do you like it? You won't find it too bad here, actually. The chaps are quite a decent set of fellas. Food's not too bad. Sometimes we think we could do with a bit more, but I've put on weight since I've been here. It's not too bad at all. Services, of course, we've got that during the week. Some, some people don't like that. I don't know how you feel about it, but I don't mind it myself. You don't mind the personal question. What was you doing before you came here? Well, before I came here, I was a waiter. But uh, I fell sick, actually, and I was living at Lewisham at the time. Before that, I'd been living down south, but I had a flat in Lewisham with a friend of mine, and then he left London, he got a job out of town. I couldn't keep it up on my own, so I was looking for another job, and accommodation difficulty, I came here. What was that? That's the lunch whistle. If you'd like to uh, come along downstairs, we'll have something to eat. Oh, I see. It's just like a factory, isn't it? Well, this is really, it's two or three factories in one, isn't it? So here they all were. Here were the chaps I was going to live with. All ages. Some had been here perhaps a long time. Others had just come, like me. They were all ordinary sort of chaps. I suppose some sort of a problem affects them here. I couldn't help wondering who they all were, what stories they had to tell. I've seen all sorts, not just here, but in other hostels too. Sad men, happy men, but mostly men with problems of some sort. Criminals too, but human beings, all of them. These men are working in the laundry, where we wash the linen for all the London hostels. John has been living with us for 12 months now, before that, he was a practicing doctor. Uh, Bert, he's been with us for two years now, and before coming to us, he was a baker by trade. Timmy has been here 36 years. He was once an analytical chemist. Mac was once a squadron leader in the Royal Air Force. The collecting and sorting of waste paper is our main work here. 
We have three lorries which go out each day collecting waste paper and we deal with an average of about 35 to 40 tonne per week. This paper is then sorted and graded and then baled into bales and then passed on to the mills for repulping. I think everybody's friendly with me in here, even the, the officers. They all have a nice word to say, a kind word, and all that sort of thing. I'm contented, very contented here. I shouldn't like to, to leave it, to tell you the truth. Not at my age, I'm getting on now. Bill here is another one who has domestic troubles. I've known him for five years now. He seems quite a decent chap and quite happy here. The men who come here mainly come here as colonists. Uh, they live in, on the building, and uh, one of the principal works of the building, of course, is that we take in mattress making. Henry here has been with us for 19 years now in the mattress section, and I suppose in that period of time he's probably made up to about 15,000 mattresses for us. Well, I suppose I was down on my luck and I thought I might as well have a try and try my luck at it. I'm quite satisfied here. Well, everything fair. What got to worry about? I don't drink. Well, the reason I don't drink, my blood's given to babies in their first 24 hours of life. See? So I won't drink on that principle. I'm me on gaffer. Nobody troubles me much. They just leave me sweetly to it. One of the special things about Henry are the decorations that he has on the walls. I don't like seeing bare walls, so, so I fill them up. There's more cats and dogs. Oh, yes, must be animals. I wouldn't have anything else if I could have this. Animals of any sort, wild animals, tame animals. Ah, that was given us by the Red Cross after the war was finished for our services, see. Proud of it, yes, because I earned it. But Henry's main hobby is looking after cats. He spends about 12 shillings a week just buying fish for them. Well, they're worth it. They're, they've got feelings as well as human beings. Anybody who's cruel to animals shouldn't live them. That's what I always maintain. I mean, they've got feelings. They like somebody to be kind to them. And I like to treat them like I treat a human being. Because I can sit a long time and watch a cat, study the cat's expressions on their faces. And they are quite interested. Different looks at different times. They enjoy it, I enjoy it, so everybody's quits. Then there's Raymond. He's been with us about a year now. Before the war, I was on the stock exchange, and uh, after the war, had a series of jobs and then um, I had a series of domestic setbacks and I finally decided to come here. My job is canvassing for clothing and general salvage, domestic utensils, books, papers, magazines and small articles. I work an area canvassing from house to house, street by street. You know, it's funny, but I can often tell by the look of a house whether I'm going to be successful or not. This one looks all right, I think. Hello. Hello, is Mummy in? No, Mummy isn't in. Do you know if she'll be in soon? Mummy isn't in. All right, then, never mind. Mummy I, I'm quite often met by children on Mondays when they mistake me for the rent man. Of course, in my job, you never really know what's going to happen next. 
Good morning, madam. I'm from the Salvation Army. Good morning, senor. I don't speak English. Lady Spanish, no understand. Llevo aquí poco tiempo y no, no entiendo el inglés. <laughs> oh, I see. Thank you very much. Good morning, madam. Good morning. I'm from the Salvation Army. I wonder if you could help. Uh, no, thanks. I never helped the Salvation Army. I don't believe in it. Thank you very much. Good morning, madam. From the Salvation Army. Oh, yes, I've been expecting you. I've got quite a nice lot of stuff for you. When will you be calling? Coming next uh, Wednesday between 3 and 6. Oh, yes, I shall have quite a lot of stuff for you. Thank you very much. Good morning. Good This is a job they gave me, working in salvage. I liked it all right. I mean, if you, if you didn't like it, you'd go round the bend anyway. Some of the stuff is quite good. And some of the stuff is terrible. The good stuff we sell to the local people. They come here hoping to pick up a bargain. As some of them have been come in for weeks and weeks, well, for years, as a matter of fact. And the other stuff is packed away for rags, which we sell. Well, you might expect the local people to be a bit unkind to us, a bit bad-tempered, but they're not, really. I can't speak about the uh, people living in the flats and houses around here because I don't really contact them, but the tradespeople, I've had occasion to use two or three of the local shops, and uh, giving civility, I've always found it's been returned, they're always polite, ready to exchange a few words of conversation. In fact, they treat you as, as you would expect people to treat you in a shop anywhere. After a time, I got to know most of the chaps here. They were a bit strange at first because I didn't know them. But as I got to know them, I got to like them. I got to know what they were thinking about. Well, I'm quite happy here, really, but uh, of course I'm young yet, and something may come along, I may see a job somewhere. But I think it would have to be something where the job is helping people in some way, and uh, the mere fact of extra money wouldn't attract me in itself. Sport is my great hobby. Cricket, football. I'm getting too ancient for it now. <laughs> oh, yes, why, it's quite all right here. It's very nice, and they make you very happy here. The, 
Authorities? Oh, yes. I haven't been corresponding with any relations since about 1920, I think. I lost all idea of that time. Of course, two or three years when you miss them like that, you, uh, you get a bit remorseful, but afterwards you knuckle down again to your normal self. I don't trouble, I just carry on. All I have, one of these days when I roll up, I go quick. Generally, particularly for me on the piano, because of the way in which the chaps approach the singing, the part which they themselves take part in, uh, I do enjoy the services. They don't hold themselves back, they don't half them go to sleep. They may go to sleep during the uh, sermon, if you like to call it a sermon, but at least they do wake up for the singing. Sing? I can't sing. I can make a noise, I don't mind sing. They're not compulsory in here, but uh, you're expected to attend. Of course, it does does people good, you see, for to, to come to a place like that, because it's a change of atmosphere. And I think everybody has a sort of a, more than here, a religious bias somewhere or other, you know. It's very good for to get them all together and to have a bit of a sing-song and all that sort of thing. I will pray. attention, if I may, to just a few words. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion on him. What a beautiful picture portrayed in those very few words. The Samaritan came just where he was. The priest saw him. The Levi looked at him. But the Samaritan came just where he was. How perfectly this shows to us what Jesus does. What a wonderful picture of compassion he had for mankind. Just think for a moment of what his coming to earth really says. I'm responsible for the other half of this community, the part you haven't seen yet. That man's looking for our hostel where he can stay the night without working for it. He gives his name and pays three shillings, two for his bed and one for his breakfast. Here he is not interviewed, all that is required is his name. Even here we have our regulars, men who have made their homes here. 
One or two of them have joined our staff and are paid. I was a night watchman previous to coming here, and I had the misfortune to lose my wife a two months ago tomorrow. And I sold my home up and give away one thing or another, and of course I had no alternative. Then there's Ernest, age 78. His hobby is stamp collecting. Well, I started it as a hobby. I've got stamps from all over the world. I'm still collecting them. I'm pastry cook, really. Yes, pretty happy as long as I've got pretty decent health. That's all I bother about. Robert is 70 years old and he's lived here for three and a half years. He doesn't work and he came here from a single room at the top of a house. Well, the reason I left it was because uh, uh, there was very little comfort. And what's more, when you've got to go home and prepare your meals and clean the place up, and the time you're finished, it's time to go to bed. I've got 23 grandchildren. I've got, I'm not sure where it's seven or eight great-great-grandchildren. And they're all alive. Well, as a matter of fact, I'm not in touch with many of them because I don't really seem to get on with them. Since I've been up here, they don't seem to have nothing to do with me, sort of thing. Sometimes, as I'm looking at the new flats, I wonder what the people are like up there, happy families, ordinary people. But I wonder if they are any happier than I am. end of another day. I wonder what will happen tomorrow, next week, the future. Please, God, forgive me for what I was and give me courage to serve you. Show me the way in which to serve you so that I, too, can have peace of mind. Amen. <laughs>